Hello, I'm the Code Whisperer. And in this video, we're going to start the series of JavaScript Explained with Game of Thrones. Now, I thought since Jon Snow has the same initials as JavaScript, we would start with him. In this video, we're going to do the most basic explanation of JavaScript, including strings, numbers, and objects. So you can code along with me at home by opening up your Chrome browser and then pressing the F12 button which will open up your developer tools. This will let you type JavaScript with me. So if you want to code along, just do that. So let's start with Jon Snow. Who is Jon Snow? The bastard son of Eddard Stark or something more? No one's really certain. But what is certain is that Jon Snow itself is what you would call a string. So in JavaScript, we would write Jon Snow as Jon Snow in double quotes, Jon Snow in single quotes, or Jon Snow in ticks. And we would need to use one of these to represent his name. So inside Chrome, let's try it out. Make some quotes and type Jon Snow. Chrome will just return what you send. If you give something valid to Chrome, it will return it back to you when you're in developer tools. If you just type the words Jon Snow without quotes, you get an error because you need to put quotes around the string. Let's try it with one more, with the ticks. Now, the reason there's three different kinds is sort of confusing. You need at least two different kinds to be able to put strings inside other strings. And the ticks create a special kind of string called template strings. Long story short, ticks are the best, so you should use ticks. So JavaScript, along with many other programming languages, has a concept of variables. Now, a variable is basically a pointer in memory to some sort of string or object or basically anything. In JavaScript, you don't have to explain what the variable is going to point to when you can define it. You can just say var John or let snow and those will create variables for you to use later. So I'll type var John. And now I have John. If I start typing it, you can see Chrome is auto-completing it. That's because the variable John has been saved in memory for the session. If I, complete, if I finish typing it, it says undefined because we haven't given it any value. To give a variable a value, you can say John equals, and then you can give it some sort of value. I'll just make it equal to the string John. Now that's preserved in memory forever. If I type John, you can see now it remembers what it's been set to. If we refresh the page, this will be erased. The let keyword is a bit different than the var keyword. It would take some time to explain, but basically they work the same way in many ways, but you can't define the same variable with let twice. So I can say let snow and make it equal to the string snow. Now if I try to say let snow and make it equal to the string John, I'll get an error. And that's basically the difference between var and let. Generally speaking, let is better and you should use let. Numbers with strings are another one of the most basic concepts in JavaScript. You can have a variable that points to any number and that number will be retained in memory. Of course, since we're dealing with computers, you can do math operations on those numbers, but we won't be talking about that in too much detail. So like in the example, I can say let age equals 20. And now I have the variable age. We can do math on it. So we can say age plus six and it'll return 26. We can also have decimals. So we can say age equals 20.5. Remember, numbers don't come in quotes. If you put a number in quotes, you get something different. So if I take the name age and I put it in quotes, Notice we have 20 in quotes there. If I say age plus six, it returns 206 in quotes. That's because when you add strings together, it just concatenates them or puts them right next to each other. So this is a pretty unexpected behavior. So keep that in mind and don't put numbers in quotes if you want them to be numbers. All right, now things are getting interesting. If we wanted to represent Jon Snow in memory and have more than just a name or one other thing, we'd have to use an object. Objects are a very important part of JavaScript, so it's good that we're learning them now. 
you can see here I've defined the Jon Snow object. Objects go in curly brackets like this, and they have pairs of values separated by colons. I'm going to type let John, and I'll make it equal to an opening curly bracket and a closing curly bracket. This is the simplest kind of object. So if I type John, it returns an object. Now we can also define objects with variables in them. So I can say John equals curly brackets. And in the curly brackets, I can say name, colon, and then in, in ticks or quotes, John Snow. And I'll press enter. And now it's equal to an object named John Snow. The interesting thing about this is if I type John dot name, it returns just John Snow. So objects can have references to many different things. You can also change the properties of objects by saying the object followed by a property it doesn't have yet, like age, and then making it equal to something. We'll say 20. Now, if I type John, you can see it's an object with two properties, and both are accessible easily. So we can say John.name or John.age. Objects can have lots and lots of properties, so learning to use them is one of the most important parts of JavaScript. So as we bring it around to the end of our video, JavaScript, in addition to numbers and strings, has a few other constructs that are what are called primitives. They're things that can't be broken down into anything less. One kind of primitive is Booleans. Now a Boolean, if you've never heard the word before, is basically something that can either be true or false. We use Booleans all the time in real life. If you ask someone, is it later than 6 p.m., and they answer you, what you're expecting to get back is a Boolean. They're either going to say, yes, that's true, or no, that's false. So in JavaScript, Booleans can only have those two values, true or false. In the case of Jon Snow, it's well known that he's the bastard of Winterfell, so the property is bastard would be equal to true. Of course, there's a bit more to Jon Snow than meets the eye, so maybe we'd have to change this variable at some point, but luckily variables in JavaScript can be changed. So we can take our object John, and we can give him a Boolean property. John dot is bastard is true. And if I look at my John object, you can see it's been added. Now we're getting a pretty full object. So Booleans are mostly used in if statements. So I can say if John dot is bastard, and I can put something in these curly quotes. And whatever happens in these curly quotes will only happen if what's in the round quotes is true. So I can just say console.log, which will write to the screen whatever I say, and I'll type in, you know nothing, John Snow. And you can see there it writes it. If I put something that's not true, for example, John.can fly, it doesn't log that. Now you'll notice we never define dot can fly. In JavaScript, if you don't define something, it defaults to what's called a falsy value. If we check John dot can fly specifically, it returns undefined, which is what dot can fly or any other properties we haven't defined are equal to. So if I say John dot is bastard, we get true. If you put an exclamation mark before any Boolean, it becomes the opposite of what it is. So if we say exclamation mark John dot is bastard, it's equal to false. Booleans are really useful and they're a construct that's in every programming language, so it's good to get familiar with them. So as Ygritte is always fond of saying, Jon Snow knows nothing, but how can we express that in code? Well, JavaScript has a special property for nothing called null, and this will be the last thing we're talking about. We already talked about Booleans, undefined. We basically talked about everything except functions, which will be covered in a later video, of course. But the null value is a falsy value, and it's used for something that's not undefined, but you know it's nothing. So let's finish up our very own John object. So we'll say John.knows is equal to null. And that returns null. So if we check John, you can see his final property is knows is equal to null. Now we saw undefined just earlier. Null and undefined are both falsy. 
So you can set values to undefined as well. You can say John dot real father equals undefined. And if we check John, you can see there it is. Now, you don't often set the undefined variable because it's sort of set up for objects that you haven't defined yet. But sometimes it can make more sense. Like for example, John does have a real father. We just don't really know who he is at this point. Undefined and null sort of work like true and false, but they're a little bit different. So if we type null, it returns null. And if we type exclamation mark null, we get true. So null is the opposite of true. But if we say null equals false, that's false. So null isn't quite true, it's not quite false. If we say null equals undefined, that's true. So JavaScript has a lot of these quirky things involving equal signs. You can also have the equals 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 sign, which gives you a completely different value. But that's beyond the scope of this video. We've learned all about objects and you have your very own John Snow object in memory. Now that you've made your very own JavaScript Jon Snow, there's no telling what you can do. I've been the Code Whisperer. Have a super day.